So we're moving on in the last video for our little environment setup and how to use our environment for Mac. In the last video, we set up a directory called delete me on the desktop. We can see that we are in that in our terminal right now. And the inside, I also have this open in our finder so we can look at it visually. We have delme.py and delme2.py. We can see there is a hidden file in here, .vs code with a settings.json uh file right we didn't create those files those were automatically generated by a vs code extension that i have and we'll talk about that in just a, a little bit when we get into the actual vs code but just like i showed in the last video the first thing i'm going to do is i actually want to open everything in vs code uh, that is my entire directory so i'm going to use code space dot in general it's pretty common that the period or the dot is used in the terminal sort of as a shorthand for everything or uh, as we might know it the way that we referenced it in our relative paths right is that a single dot uh, references the current directory right so i've said i want to open the current directory in vs code with this code space dot command so I have this open again right here we see the settings.json file that was not a file that we had in our directory when we made it this is something that VS code generated and put in here and what this is is this was generated by an extension that I have that extension is Python uh, a, a, a very standard Python extension. As a matter of fact, the first time that you save or open a Python file in your VS code, it's going to prompt you in the lower right hand corner like, hey, this is a Python file. Do you want me to download the Python extension? And I would suggest that you go ahead and hit yes there. It's then going to prompt you, hey, which Python interpreter do you want me to use? And when it does that, what you're going to do is you're going to find that path actually to our anaconda 3 installation that we've done and if you can recall ours was in the opt the opt file at anaconda 3 with the binary uh in the the bin the binary file just in a, a directory named python um all right it's actually probably an executable file called python but neither here nor there this is not something you need to worry about too much uh most of that will be taken care of um, this is, there is a built-in terminal inside of VS Code. We can see here that it is a mirror of the terminal that I see. In general, I don't like to use the built-in terminal in VS Code. I like to keep things separate. I'm a little bit of a control person. So um, if you're managing multiple environments, it can be difficult to know exactly which environment the um which environment is being used by vs code at any given time right and it looks like i only have my z shell available here but you can set up multiple different shells if you're working in different languages or um, if you're doing bash scripting you might actually have a bash shell still available to you as well but um as i mentioned Right, you can really use make your own decision on this, but personally, I prefer to use the separate terminal on its own. But there is this built in one here if you choose to use it. If I actually go into my Python files, I can just give those each a double click to open them. We can see we printed or we put in a print statement with hello world in delme dot delme2.py. Let's go ahead and um, let's import numpy and that usually is as np you haven't co covered numpy yet but i'm going to do something really cool we're just going to say um my array is equal to an np dot array and the syntax for that is looks something like this right and then what i want to do is i'm actually going to print array plus five and what you're going to see when we actually execute this is that 
NumPy is great. It'll actually add five to each individual element of that array and then print me out a version of that NumPy array with five added to everything. So, you know, if we were dealing with a list, we'd have to do a for loop and add five and maybe make a new list and then return that new list and then print that new list. Uh, NumPy is really powerful and we won't have to do that. Right. But now I have some code in each of these two files, but I actually want to execute these two files. So I'm going to come back over here to my terminal. I'm going to go ahead and clear it out. Right. First, I'll just make sure I know where I'm at. Um, you know, PWD always really important print working directory. I can see I am in my home directory desktop delete me. Um, I did an LS command. I can see these are the two files that I'm looking for. Right. So let's go ahead and execute using the keyword Python followed by the file name. And in this case, I want that file name. I'm going to zoom this out just a little bit so we can get it all on one line. I want to execute the file delme 2py um, using the command Python. I hit enter and it executes that Python file and gives me my console output. Right. Similarly, I can do uh, just that single uh, that single file, that delme.py, right? That original array, if we look at it, was one, two, three, four, six. We added five to it and we did get indeed six, seven, eight, nine, eleven. So that's how we can actually execute a Python file from the terminal that we have edited inside of VS Code. And to give you an idea, right, if I change to my home directory, I can do this with some sort of uh, absolute or relative path. Let's go home directory, followed by the desktop, followed by delete me, followed by delme.py, right? It goes to that, that uh, relative path. Um, I could do an absolute path as well, or a home directory path. All of those would work. And... I can execute these Python files with that command Python. And that's really how you're going to do most of the work throughout the DSI in terms of editing your Python files, testing and executing them using the terminal and looking at your output there. Now, the last thing I want to cover in this unit for setting up your environment is how to get to a Jupyter Notebook. So if I actually just type Jupyter Notebook, What's going to happen is this instance of the terminal is essentially going to turn into a server, a local server, and then you can see it, but on my other monitor, I got this little pop-up, and this pop-up is actually a Jupyter Notebook, where, right, I can see Jupyter, I could go to running, there are no Jupyter Notebooks running right now, but, for example, I could do a new Jupyter Notebook, I have a couple environments on here not all of these are still in existence but my newest one is python 3 i know that one exists but i can go ahead and i can make this new this new um jupiter notebook right i can go ahead and rename the name of the notebook i'm gonna say i'm gonna call this um delete me delete me dot and it will give the file extension on its own. It's a uh, .ipynb for IPy notebook. And I can then, right, I have a code cell. I can then execute on this code cell, right? And it gives me my output. I can also use a markdown cell, right? And say, this is a header, oops. Um, I am taking notes about the code below. Um, this is the code notes are about print. I am code and I need notes. Then go ahead and get rid of this extra one, right? So we can see how useful a Jupyter Notebook can be. And I guess I'll go ahead and get rid of this Hello World. That was just a tester, right? We can 
use a Jupyter Notebook. We can have text, we can use headers. Um, this is actually in a language called Markdown. We can also do mathematical uh, formulas. I can say that f of x is equal to, let's say a fraction, and we'll call that fraction um, three over, we'll call that, since it's, uh, we'll call that three over five, and um, time three over five X, right? And I can see, I get this nice, beautifully rendered mathematical formula. So this is a, could be a really helpful way for you to take notes throughout the DSI. But, you know, these are the main ways that you are going to want to interact with your development environment uh, in that VS code with the use of a terminal or in a Jupyter Notebook. When you're done with your Jupyter Notebook, just make sure that you save it. You can actually see that it saves that file and it does it periodically automatically as well. Then what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you actually close and halt this. Um, and then before you quit out, you wanna make sure that you do not have any terminals running. There's this quit button up here, but in just for the sake of getting used to our terminal, if you hit control C, right, it says, oh, do you want me to shut down this notebook server? And since I am done with it, uh, it looks like I didn't hit it in time. Uh, if I hit yes, it goes ahead, it shuts down, right? This is going to no longer be running. I can go ahead and close that. And now, right, I can actually have my terminal back. So that's it for the set up on Mac. Hopefully all of these things make sense. You should make sure that you go through and you can do all of these things on your own computer. And if you can't, make sure that you reach out to me on Slack so we can set up appointment to get things sorted out.